Okay, so now we're in the upstairs of the compound. We're going to do a little bit of teasing here. We just, uh, in our second episode, Heroes, we got to talk a little bit about people that we met along the way. I never knew what to do with all these autographs, so I kind of made a collage. So here are some of the people that I've met along the way. I think this is a lot of fun. Yeah, meeting people is fun. This is my favorite one, though. I met Ernie Hudson, a uh, Ghostbuster. I had him sign a Twinkies box, and it's one of the quotes from the movie is, that's a big Twinkie. <laughs> I was very happy with that. Kira Schron, she was in the original Night of the Living Dead. Of course, Dee Wallace. Mm -hmm. It's Charles Cipher, he was in the original Halloween, and of course, Major League. Uh, this is Scout Taylor Compton. She was in Rob Zombie's both Halloweens, and she was in the movies The Runaways. Terry McMinn, she was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, that one's awesome. It's a good one, yeah. She is super cool. She still sends me uh, personal birthday messages every for oh. my birthday. She is super, How super cool. How cool. Yeah, again, Dee Wallace and uh, Unmentionables there in their bloomers. <laughs> she was fun. She was a lot of fun. I would love to have her on. Oh, I would man. love to That'd meet be great. her. <laughs> yeah, for those of you longtime Mothership listeners, I actually had her on a guest twice on the show. Wow. Because when I met her at this particular convention, she remembered me. So I got her to be on the radio. So she was super, super cool. Sweet. Very approachable, very down to earth. Very cool. Here we have uh, Ari Lyman, the first Jason Voorhees. Here's Ari in his makeup. Are super we going to cool do, guy. we should do a mothership event or just, you know, when he's in town then. Yeah, Ari comes to Milwaukee quite often. I'm sure fun. we can get, well, I don't want to promise anything, but yeah, yeah. We, I would definitely talk to him. Cool. And this is uh, Eileen Dietz. She was a stunt double. Uh, in The Exorcist for these particular scenes with the pea soup for Linda Blair. Wow. Even knowing that that wasn't real, I still cannot watch that movie. I'm <laughs> sorry. Not alone, anyways. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And of course, we have uh, some of my other favorites. Tom Atkins. He was in the original Halloween uh, I love that picture. He was also obviously in Lethal Weapon. He was in a MASH episode. He's been around a good long, a good long while. And of course we have Sid Haig. Sid Haig goes way back into TV history. He's been an actor for a good long while. He got his, he got a start in a little TV show called Gunsmoke. Mm -hmm. That goes way, 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 way back. He was yeah, also on an episode of Star Trek, the original series. But he did a lot of black exploitation movies with Pam Greer back in the 70s. He's been around. The man has been around. He was super, super cool. Now we'll get a little dose of the living room of the compound. Just Sorry. as impressive as the basement, though. Yes, uh, MASH is on TV. It's one of my favorite shows. Django's looking at us like we're complete morons, <laughs> as often as he does. He's like, you guys film too much. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have some of my favorite books that keep me uh, in tune with paranormal, pop culture, uh, whatever you want to call it. This, this is my, this is my comic book shelf, my little Beavis and Butthead. So as far as comic book goes, I'm a fan of comic books, but my favorite comic book, G.I. Oh, yeah. Joe. This is a giant issue of the issue number one. That one was hard to find. And these are all the issues of the G.I. Joe. Now, when I was a kid, I got started in too late, so I never got some of the, uh, some of the originals. This is my first issue number three is the first real one. Otherwise, they had something called the Tales of G.I. Joe. Like for those of you who missed the first running, so they had the Tales of G.I. Joe was the second running of a lot of the earlier issues. That's how I was able to mm -hmm. piece it all together. Now I missed a lot of the ending of the first run, the beginning of the second run. Now the second run, the author Larry Hama picked it right back up where he left off, from like issue 155 and a half to issue 156 or 155 and a half part two he picked up the story right where he left off and i didn't know that he did that so i'm trying to combine mm -hmm. the old and the new tricky to do as far as new comic books go i'm really into captain america nowadays so i got into steve rogers captain america agent of hydra Oh, yeah. So this is a story of Cap gone wrong. You got your Hydra hat, too. I have my Hydra hat. I'll wear it on the show from time to time. I do have some Star Wars comics. 
uh, the newer ones. I never got into Star Wars comics when I was a kid. <laughs> Not really for me. You were more of the toy guy. More of the toys. Now that being said, we're on a real quick offshoot here in the in the kitchen. Let me illuminate this. I have a poster I found at the local comic book store called Rockheads. This poster of a lot of old uh, Star Wars comic book covers. I thought that poster was just too cool for school. Mm -hmm. Now I did have this when I was a kid. This is the giant Marvel issue number one. It's in cherry, cherry condition. So I framed it, hung it up on the wall. Yes, that is Dave Prowse's autograph. He was Darth Vader. And of course, I've got my old-timey Captain America comic book poster. Sorry for the shadows and whatnot. And there is my new Cap America Civil War poster. Nice. So while we're on the line of posters, I have the Mona Lisa of Star Wars posters. Talked about it before. This is the Revenge of the Jedi poster. I know the lighting is a little tricky because of the angles. Carrie is doing her absolute best. I'll do a pan of it. <laughs> so how that poster come about, my brother and I were in the Star Wars fan club when we were kids. It's called Bantha Tracks. So between Empire and Jedi, they had, uh, for 10 bucks, send us in and we'll give you a, a preview poster of the up and coming film called Revenge of the Jedi. So we did that. They sent us the poster. We got it a couple of weeks later. Oh, by the way, we've changed the name to Return of the Jedi. Sorry for those of you who got the wrong title poster. We're sorry about that. Well, 100 years later, more or less. Uh, sorry's got nothing to do with it. Thank you for uh, <laughs> changing the title. So there, uh, there that is. Cool. This is one of my favorite posters. I know it's a little difficult to see, but the one over the TV, it's a Darth Vader photo mosaic. If you get close enough, maybe I can illuminate here a little bit. Those are all frames from Empire Strikes Back, all put together as uh, in Darth Vader's face. Well, let me kill that one. These two are glaring it. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. The glare is for real. There we go. Here, I'll kill this other one. Okay. Yes, this is what happens, folks, when you film in a house, you get glares from lights and whatnots. But yeah, those are all scenes oh, from Empire Strikes Back. And I don't have a good camera yet, so well, deal with right. it. <laughs> I think I think they'll get the gist. And if you pan back, it has all gone into forming the face of the Dark Lord of the Sith. All hail. I don't remember where I got that from. That was a really, really, really long time ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the Django. Ever on the watch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yes, our ever watchful mascot, the Django. His little squeals. <laughs> yes, aren't they adorable? The giant fluff monster himself. So there you have it. There's a little bit of a mini tour of the upstairs, uh, the posters, the comic books. I'm sure we'll do more later. We've even discussed filming up here a time or two. MASH won't be on the TV when we film. Sorry <laughs> about that. For those of you who love MASH, you're welcome. For those of you who hate it, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship with MASH. <laughs> Some people, oh man, I love that show. Other people, oh God, I hate that show. My parents made me watch it. Well, I get it. It's cool. So there you have it. Once again, thank you for joining us on this tour. Thank you for Carrie for filming. Uh, okay. without, without, and I'm gonna, we're going to say this often. Without her, this relaunch of the show wouldn't have happened mm. because I am a complete dunce with the technology. Dolby... Uh, isn't as well. I still can't program my VCR, and they don't even make them anymore. So without her technical guidance and expertise, Carrie, thank you very much. No problem. This would still be an idea other than us being able to show you all this cool stuff. So thank you for joining us. Uh, more tours to follow. We'll see you soon. All right.